Hello and welcome to our recorded discussion. Today we will be discussing lesson 1.1 and 1.2, which is the statistical inference and significance testing. As a recap in our last discussions, we were able to discuss what is statistical design and analysis, and what are the applications of statistics in our everyday life in your course overview? So now, let us proceed with statistical inference and significance testing about hypothesis. Okay. So in this chapter, we should be able to define what is statistical inference, what are the samples of statistics and sample uh, population proportions, steps in performing significance testing, what is a p-value, including the calculations using your MS Excel and um, your manual calculation, and of course, what is your z-statistic, the, the g-square, your standard normal distribution, what is the normal curve in the z-table, and of course, the t-distribution and t-scores and your confidence levels and significance levels. Okay. So first, let us tackle what is a statistical inference. There are two types of statistical inference, which is your confidence intervals in your test of significance. So in your confidence intervals, it is actually being used to estimate a population or a population parameter. While in your test significance, it is used to assess the evidence provided by data about some claim concerning a population. It is also the formal procedure of comparing observed data with a claim, which is also called your hypothesis, the truth of which is being assessed. Now, what is a claim? A claim is a statement about a parameter like the population proportion, which is denoted by P, or the population mean, which is denoted by U. The results of your significance tests are expressed in terms of probability that measures how well your data and the claim agree. Okay? Right. So let's proceed with your sample statistics and population parameters. For your quantitative variables, you have your population mean, you have your standard deviation. For categorical variables, you have your proportion, and a statistics is being described from samples, such as your sample mean, your standard deviation, and your proportion as well. So the main objective of statistics is to make inferences about a population based on information contained in your sample. Okay. All right, let's proceed with your significance test about hypothesis. That includes the steps in your significance testing and the normal curve or the standard normal curve. Now let us um, define or let us check if what is what is a significance test? So the main goal of many researchers stud or research studies is to check whether the data support certain statements or predictions. So you have your predictions like your or your hypothesis. Those statements are your hypothesis about the population. And what is a hypothesis? It is a statement about a population, usually claiming that a population parameter takes a particular numerical value or falls in a certain range of values. Now, what is a significance test or your test for short? It is actually a method used to summarize the data or used to summarize the evidence from your data about your hypothesis. Significance testing uses a probability to provide a way to quantify how plausible a parameter is while controlling the chance of an incorrect inference. Okay, So it actually determines whether there is enough evidence in favor of certain belief or hypothesis about a parameter. Now let us proceed with the steps in your significance testing. So the first one would be assumption. Second would be the, state, uh, the statement of your hypothesis. Third is to compute your test statistic and then interpret your test statistic. And then after the calculations, you make your conclusion. Let's go to the first step, which is your assumptions. So in your assumptions, um, each significance test makes certain assumptions or has certain conditions under which it applies. Okay. 
So a test assumes that the date production use randomization. It, um, the assumptions may be about the sample size or about the shape of the population distribution. So um, the first step is to specify the variable and parameter because the assumption commonly pertains to the method of data, which is your randomization, your sample size, and the sample shape of the population distribution. Now, in this course, we will be focusing on your normal distribution. Okay. Now, the second one would be to state your hypothesis. What are your hypotheses? There are two kinds of hypotheses that you're going to um, state here, which is your null hypo hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. Now, what is the difference of the two? The null hypothesis is the statement that the, par that the parameter takes a particular, a particular value, usually no effect, or simply it is the statement you are trying to prove. And it is denoted by H subscript 0. So um, the value of your hypothesis could be your hypothesis is equal to gre greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Well, for your alternative hypothesis, this states that the parameter falls in some alternative range of values and denoted by H subscript A. So what is your uh, alternative hypothesis? It is a set of alternative param uh, parameters that is being used to prove your null hypothesis. So if you're going to reject your null hypothesis, it means that you are going to accept your alternative hypothesis and vice versa. Now, okay, so let's just uh, take a look at the difference of the null hypothesis in your alternative hypothesis. So in this example, the null hypothesis is stated is that the probability of an astrologer to correctly predict three personalities in a person is one third. While the alternative hypothesis states that the probability is not equal to one third. Let's take another example. So it talks about, uh, in this example, it talks about the average time or year for a college student to graduate. Now, the null hypothesis is stated here is that the average time would be greater than or equal to five years. While for the alternative hypothesis, it states that it is less than five years. So it could be three, 3.5, or four years, something like those. Okay, All right, so for the third step, of course, you need to compute your test statistics, which is the basis of your p-value or your probability. Now, what is your test statistics? It actually measures the distance between the point estimate of the parameter and its null hypothesis value. It is usually by the number of the standard errors between them. So for if you are going to calculate for proportions, you are going to calculate the z-value. If you are going to calculate, calculate for means, you are going to compute for the t-value. Okay, the next one is to interpret the test statistic using the rejection region based on the confidence level or using p-values. Now, what is a p-value? A p-value is the probability that the test statistic takes the observed value or a value more extreme if we presume that the null hypothesis is true. So the smaller the p-value, the stronger the, uh, the evidence against the null hypothesis, which is your h subscript 0. So meaning, if your p-value is less than your significance level, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. But if it's the other way around, then we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Let's take an example of a p-value calculation. So in here, okay, so um, we are going to check the uh, population or the p-value of the people in India who speaks Hindi. Okay, so now what are the given? Let's Let's check it here. So these are the given, which is your sample size, 
n is equal to 240. And then your uh, population proportion, we will have to find the sample pro uh, proportion because it's not given. But we can do that by dividing the number of respondents, the one who uh, responded that they speak Hindi. So 80 out of 240. For, for you to be able to get your sample proportion, you need to divide the 80 out of 240 there. So your sample proportion would be 0 0.33. And those figures will be the one that you're going to use in your next calculation. So your particulars would be your population proportion, which is the given here with 27% or 0 0.27, and your sample size, which is 240. Now, if you're going to um, do the calculations for the Z statistic, you're going to follow the formula here, which is your Z is equal to population proportion minus your sample proportion divided by the square root of your uh, sample proportion minus 1 or multiplied by 1 minus your sample proportion divided by your sample size. So you can actually implement that here in the Excel um, in the Excel or MS Excel. You can refer to the MS um, you can refer to the Excel file that I've uploaded in Canvas. I've already uploaded there an activity or I mean an example on how to calculate your Z statistic. Okay. So you just need to follow the formula for you to get your Z statistic. And your Z statistic upon implementing the formula would be 2.093696. Okay. All right. So after calculating the Z statistic, you will need to calculate your p-value. Now, how will you calculate your p-value? The first thing that you're going to do is to include or calculate your normal distribution value, which is this one. You can actually see that in your, or, or you can, there is actually a built-in function in MS Excel, which is the norms this function for you to calculate your normal distribution value. So we have to look at the 2.0 in the column and the value in 0 0.9 if we are going to calculate the p-value using your standard normal curve or your z table so in here you need to look for 2.0 and 0 0.09 so 2.0 and 0 0.09 which is 4817 there so you're going to use that to calculate your normal distribution and after calculating the normal distribution you are going to calculate your p-value since the p-value is less than the significant level of 5%, we reject the null hypothesis. So this is your step 5, making the conclusion. Okay? Great. All right, so um, let's proceed to the example B. Now, it says here, Studies show that the higher number of flight tickets are bought by males as compared to females. They are bought by males and females in the ratio of 2 is to 1. The research was carried out at a particular airport in India to find the distribution of air tickets among males and females. So out of 150 tickets, 88 tickets were bought by males and 62 by females. We need to find out if the experimental ma uh, manipulation causes the change in the results or we are observing a change, var uh, a chance variation. Now, we need to calculate the p-value assuming that the degree of significance is 0 0.05. Now, in this example, we're actually going to use the chi-square test. What is your chi-square test? So your chi-square test will give you a p-value, and the p-value will tell you if your test results are significant or not. In order to perform a chi test and get the p-value, you need two pieces of information, which is your degrees of freedom and your alpha level, alpha level which is your uh, significance level. Okay, so what is your degrees of freedom? That's the number of categories minus one. 
and your of course significance level it could be 0 0.5 which is the one that is being usually used or you can use 0 0.01 or 0 0.10 okay so the degrees of freedom are placed as a subscript after the chi square which is your x squared symbol for example the following chi square shows six degrees of freedom so you're going to write that as x squared subscript six minus Okay, so uh, in using your chi-square, you have two data that you're going to use, which is your uh, observed data and your expected data, which is the population um, the population divided by your number of category. You're, you will be able to see that later on. So in the problem, we have your observed value, which is 88 for males and 62 for females. So the observed uh, value is 88. And the expected values for males would be two-thirds, which is multiplied by 150, which is your sample size. And that would be 100 males. And for the expected value for females, you have one-third multiplied by 150, so that's 50 females. Now, let us find your uh, chi-square by using this formula. Okay, So by using that formula, you are to use this in your MS Excel. You just need to find an empty cell below your expected value and label that as your chi-square. And then implement the formula and you will get your chi-square, which is your 4.42. Okay. So step three is to find the degrees of freedom since there are two variables, which is male and female. So n is equal to 2. Now for your degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, or the formula for that is n minus 1, so your degrees of freedom would be 1. And then for step 4, from the table here, you already have your uh, chi-square value. You're, al you're also going to find your p-value. Okay, We can see that the p-value is between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05. Since the value is less than the degree of significance, we reject your null, null hypothesis. So this is your p-value. You can actually calculate your p-value using the um, built-in function of your MS Excel, which is your cheat test. And then you are going to include there your... Um, observed value or the ratio of your observed value and then your expected value all right okay so the next one or the last part would be to make the conclusion just like what i've said earlier right they already made a conclusion since the p value is less than the degree of significance which is 0 0.5 and we have a p value of 0 0.03766 then we will reject your null hypothesis so it's here uh, basing from the p-value it's either reject or you accept your null hypothesis okay so now let us proceed with your normal uh, standard normal distribution okay now let us proceed with your standard normal distribution so your standard normal distribution is this um, is also called your z distribution or it is the special normal distribution where the mean is equal to zero and your standard deviation is one it means that this normal curve is fixed okay so any normal distribution can be standardized by converting its values into z scores and your z-scores tells you how many standard deviations from the mean each value lies. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the formula of your z-score. Now, in the next, um, uh, in this example, we are going to try to check how you can implement your z-score by getting the test statistics. So for example, you have your given here. So you have your um, population mean, which is 100, population standard, standard deviation, which is 16, sample mean, which is 108, and then sample size, which is 16. Now, you are going to replace that to the values here in your formula. Getting your z-score is equal to 2. Okay. okay, so let's take this as an example. So we have um, 
we have the given here, which is your individual value, the mean and your standard deviation. So your individual value would be um, 100 kilometers per hour, and the mean of that problem would be 90 kilometers per hour, and your standard deviation would be 10 kilometers per hour. Okay, so we are going to calculate the z-score by replacing the given to the formula here. So that will be um, z is equal to x minus the mean over your standard deviation. So that's 100 minus 90 over 10. That's equal to 1. Okay, so if you're going to look at your um, normal distribution or your normal curve, which is your Z table, you can see here, because that's what we're going to use to test the percentage of your probability. Okay, you can see it here. So if you're going to take a look at 1, 1 1.0, the value here at 0, 0, which is, means that your mean would be 0, 0 or 0. The value that you will get here is your 0 0.3413. So that will be the one that you are going to use in this equation. So 1, which is your value or the value in your uh, distribution table, um, I mean 1 minus the significance level in your value of 1 in your uh, distribution table, which is 0 0.3413, that would be 0 0.1587 or if you're going to convert that in a percentage that would be 15.87 percent okay so another example would be what if a car is traveling 70 kilometers per hour what is the probability or what is the uh, z-score now let's just replace that using the formula and the given mean and standard deviation from the last problem let's just see change the 100 to 70, which is the given here. So 70 minus 90 divided by the standard deviation, which is 10, is equal to negative 2. Now, if you're going to look for your negative 2 in your distribution table, that will be 2, and that would be 0 0.4772. Why is it 4 point, uh, 0 0.4772? Um, even if it's negative 2, because your normal distribution table is symmetrical. So negative 2 is equal to 2. Okay. So for your significance level, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4772 is equal to 0 0.0228, or if you're going to convert it in a percentage, that would be 2.28%. So let us take an example in the, uh, this one. You have two outputs here, or I mean you have two z-scores that you're going to compute. The first one is the car that is having or traveling between 70 and then traveling with 100. So it's in between. Now what are you going to do? You need to calculate the first one first, which is your uh, 70 per hour and then the next one is your 100 per hour and from those you're going to look for the values of your um, z-score in the z distribution table using those that would be 0 0.4772 plus 3.3413 um, that would be 0 0.81 85 or if you're going to convert that in a percentage that would be 81.85 percent so as you can see here the probability is under this curve or the one that is shaded here so from negative 2 until 1 that is your probability okay all right so the standard normal distribution is a probability distribution. So the area under the curve between two points tells you the probability of variables taking on a range of values. So the total area under the curve is 1 or 100%, just like this one. All right, so every z-score has an associated p-value that tells you the probability of all values below or above that z-score occurring. So this is the area 
under the curve left or right of the z-score. So this is your z-score, this line, and this is your probability or the points of your probability under this curve. Okay. Okay, so this is your distribution table. How will you use your Z table or Z distribution table? Once you have a Z score, the one that we calculated earlier by using the formula given, you can look up at the corresponding probability in the Z table. And um, as you can see here, the first column of the Z table contains the Z score, which is this one, the first column. All right, and the top row of the table gives the second decimal place like this one so if you have 2.09 2.08 you will look at it here first or the z score and the designated decimal points so if it's 2.09 your uh, probability would be 0 0.4817 all right okay so um let's try to check one example on using your z distribution to find the probability so for example you are calculating a score of 1380 and the z score is 1.53 now using the full z table we find that for the z score of 1.53 the value is 0 0.937 how can we say that so let's try to see um from here, okay, 1.0 and then 1 point, I mean 1.0 and then the given is 1.53. So you're going to look for 0 0.5, 0 0.3, so somewhere in this part, just like that. So you will be able to see that you will have 0 0.937 or 93.7% which is under this one so you can actually use this as well as your basis this is your z-score and this is your I mean this is your z distribution score and then you find your z-score here it's around 1.53 so you can see your shaded part here as your probability Okay, all right, so let's go to example two, which is the step-by-step -step process in using your Z distribution. So uh, for example, you are a sleep researcher and you're curious about how sleep habits change during COVID-19 lockdowns. So you collect sleep duration data from a sample during a full lockdown. So before the lockdown, the population mean would be 6.5 hours of sleep. The lockdown sample mean is 7.62. Now, you are going to find your Z-score or calculate your Z-score Z -score for the sample mean. And then you are going to find your P-value for your Z-score using your Z-table. Okay, so for the given, your X or sample mean would be your 7.62. Your population mean would be your 6.5 and your standard deviation would be 0 0.5. Now you just need to replace the values in the given formula and you will get your z-score as 2.24. Now if we're going to look at your uh, p-value using your uh, z-distribution table, you can see it here that um, your 2.2 and then 0.4, you need to your you need to see your column, which is 2.2, and then 0.4 because your z-score is 2.24, and your p-value would be 0 0.9874. Okay, so that will be the one that you will use here. Oops, hold on. Okay. And so the table tells you that the area under the curve up to or below your z-score is 0 0.9874 which means that your samples mean sleep duration is higher about 98.74% of the populations mean sleep during lockdown or pre-lockdown okay now let us um, calculate as well the probability using your z-score so your z-score would be 
2.24, that would be 1 minus 0 0.9874, which is 0 0.0126 or 1.26%. So with a p-value less than your significance level, you can conclude that the average sleep duration in COVID-19 lockdown was significantly higher than the free lockdown at the pre-lockdown average. Okay, now let us proceed with your T distribution. What is your T distribution? So the T distribution is a type of normal distribution that is used for uh, smaller sample sizes. Normally distributed data form a bell shape, which is this one, when plotted on a graph with more observations near the mean and fewer observations in the tails. So the one that you're focusing here is this. Okay. So the distribution or the t-distribution is most often used to find the critical values for a confidence interval when the data is approximately normally distributed and to find your corresponding p-value from a statistical test that uses the t-distribution with your t-test or your regression analysis. Okay, so example, if you measure the average test score from a sample of only 20 students, you should use the t-distribution to estimate the confidence interval around the mean. If you use the z-distribution, your confidence level or your confidence interval will be artificially precise. So we have actually three types of tests or t um, tests or tails that we're going to base from. So if your alternative hypothesis is, e is not equal to, then you have two tails, which is the left and your right. If it's great or less than, you will only have your left, left tail test. And if, it's your, uh, if your alternative hypothesis is greater than, then you will only have your right tail test. All right, so the t-distribution uh, gives you more probability to observations in the tails of the distribution than the standard normal distribution or your z-distribution. So in this way, the t-distribution is more conservative than the standard normal distribution. Okay, all right, let's check here if, if what is your t-distribution and your t-scores. So your t-score is the number of standard deviations from the mean in a t-distribution. You can typically look up at a t-score in a t-table or by using an online t-score calculator. Okay. So for the t-score and confidence intervals, um, confidence intervals use t-scores to calculate the upper and lower bounds of the prediction interval. And the t-score is used to generate the upper and lower bounds, which is also known as your critical value okay. all right and the next one would be your critical um, I mean your confidence level and significance level which is your alpha so a confidence level refers to the percentage of all possible samples that can be expected to include the true population parameter this is also your one minus your alpha this indicates where the fail to reject region lie, which is it's 90, uh, 90%, 95%, or 99%. So you can see it here in this example. So this is your confidence level or the region of your fail, um, what do we call this? Fail to reject region here. And you have your significance level here which is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 that's equal to 0 0.1 and of course your critical z scores which is under here so that would be 1.645 and 1.645 for the left side and then um, the, this one or this area is your um, area of confidence interval it's 90% Okay, so this is also an example, uh, which is only pertaining to a one-tailed t-test uh, t or t-distribution. So your significance level would be 0 0.05, and of course, your confidence level is 
95%. Because in your significance level, why is it 95%? Your significance level is 0 0.5, which is 5%. That includes your margin of error, uh, margin of error, or your um, percentage of failure. Okay, and your, of course your Z score would be one point six four five as well, which is this one. Okay, so um, this is the end of our discussion. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to watch this video, and again. As part of the reminders for your exams, you just need to review for the calculations of your Z statistics, your P value, your G square, and your normal distribution. Thank you so much and have a great day.